Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, if you're tuning in for News of the Times Online Crossword Championship, I'm afraid you are doomed to as much disappointment as us. Um, yet again, it did not happen. And the same problem as yesterday unbelievably occurred. The servers were overloaded. The crosswords couldn't be downloaded by almost anybody. Um, effectively, the whole competition crashed. And frankly, this is very poor this time. You know, you could maybe forgive them yesterday's um, overload, more people than they expected, not knowing the site couldn't handle it. But given that the IT department presumably assured David Parfit, the organiser, that today they could cope, to then not be able to cope again is dismal. So anyway, we're all very disappointed. The competition didn't happen. There is no Times Online Crossword Champion. They've cancelled the event. They hope to run a physical event next year. COVID allowing. So there we go. There is no Times Online Crossword Champion or any form of Crossword Champion in the cryptic world for 2020. So this is, um, we're doing a puzzle today in response to a plea sent by uh, Mrs. Franco de Leon from Our Lady of the Rosary School in Paramount, California. Uh, she has had to step into the breach to take over helping um, a team who have bravely entered the academic junior high decathlon. Now, I don't know what that is, but I'm guessing it's not a physical decathlon as one of the disciplines is logic. And the team have requested help in techniques for crisscross Sudoku. So I'm assuming that that means diagonal Sudoku. And we haven't done many of these on the channel for a long time. Uh, so I had a look back into what we have been sent. And there was a request from a Jesse Woodman in the past for help with this puzzle and um, I thought well two birds with one stone let's have a go at this diagonal puzzle and hopefully we can show the techniques that might help uh, the team in Paramount with their logic challenge I hope that's what's being requested so it's a diagonal Sudoku today no fancy tricks other than that the normal Sudoku rules apply one to nine in every row column and three by three box and also along each diagonal as marked by these lines so that's what we've got do have a go on the link below the video the puzzle I don't know where it came from Jesse I think said well, I don't know it was something that they'd found somewhere and uh, I don't know, I don't know what collection it's from, but anyway, here we go. Do try it on the link below the video, um, and I'm gonna have a go now. Let's get cracking. So, just a little bit of, yeah, regular Sudoku first. So those two nines there are quite suggestive. Where can the nine go in column two? It can't go in those cells because of the nines already in that box. It's got to go in one of those two and that nine is telling us where it is it can't be there so the nine goes here and that's going to put a nine in one of these two cells and this is the snyder notation that we recommend when a digit can be confined to two cells within a three by three region oh, and that works very well three can't be in either of those so it's in one of these and four can't be in either of those either so that's also in one of these. Now that becomes a pair and this central uh, notation for us shows when candidates are, when a cell is confined to only a couple of candidates, we'll put them in the middle. So that means one and six are the only digits remaining for this box. And we've got a one down here showing which way round they go. So that's quite straightforward. Um, Two, seven, eight, four in the rest of the row, no. Seven and six though to go in this column to fill it up. And we've got a seven there to show which way round they go. And three and eight are these two. Now we don't know which way round they go yet. Three, five, six, one, four, right. Nine and seven can't be in these two cells. So they form a pair here. Actually, we do know which way round that three, eight go because of that three in box eight. So that did sort it out. They obviously had to be different. So that gave me a two there. Three, four, one, eight, six to place in the middle. This one can't be eight because of the eight in that row. This one can't be six because of the six there. Now along the bottom, 
there's no four in those two cells, so it must be over here somewhere. And we've got sevens looking upwards. That's interesting. Okay, seven can't be there for two reasons. One is that seven, and one is the seven already on that diagonal. So you do have to look at these diagonals as well. In fact, that is very useful. Look at these threes. Three, there, three in those two cells mean three is in one of these, but that three and that one on the diagonal tell us where the three is. So you always have to keep looking at the diagonal as well as um, the rows and columns. Now, this is one of the absolutely key techniques for diagonal Sudoku is spotting numbers which are not on the diagonal in two out of the three boxes. So I'm looking at this diagonal and I'm finding numbers which are not on that diagonal already. So seven and nine are clearly on it. But three appears in two of the boxes and not on the diagonal. So where is three on that diagonal? It must appear there because all the numbers one to nine are on it. But it must now be in this box down here. And we can see that it's not in those two cells from these threes. So we can place three on that diagonal. And again, let's look at the same diagonal because I can see that there are two twos in the boxes that the diagonal uses that are not on the diagonal. So two there and two there. Two must be on these three cells of the diagonal. Now we can see from that two that it's not there, but it does confine a two to one of those cells. Again, let's look at this diagonal. Seven is not on the diagonal, but it is occupying cells in the two, the second and third box the diagonal runs through. So seven is on one of these, and we've got two sevens here to tell us that it can't be there and there. So seven must go up here. And again, on this same diagonal, nine is in that box and not on it. Nine is in that box and not on it. So nine must be on one of those two diagonal cells. It can't be there because of this one. So these are the kind of techniques that really allow us to make some progress in a diagonal Sudoku. Now, we put seven as pencil marks there and we've placed a seven here, so we know it's not there. Seven must be here in that box. Um, let's see what else we can find now. Right, threes in the middle boxes. Those two threes mean that the three in row five has to be here. Four is in one of those two and therefore also over there. Five is somewhere up here. Again, this is just pencil marking to make progress. Right, those two sevens require a seven to be in one of these three cells. It clearly can't be here because of that one. So we can fill it in and that resolves this nine seven pair that we had going in box eight. Um, don't know whether this is one or five, but that's all it can be given that run of six numbers and that one. Tricky. Okay, three and three, they are very useful. We can place the three in column one. That also resolves a pair and we've got another box completely finished. Uh, does that four help us? Not particularly. This is quite an interesting cell. It can see nine, one, five, six, seven and three in the row and four on the diagonal. So either two or eight goes in there. Um, eight is ruled out of those cells and that one by the placed eights. So eight goes in one of these. And that is looking at this cell where we just marked that it's either two or eight. So that's really helpful. We now know it can't be eight because eight must be in one of those two cells. So that one is a two. That fixes the two on the other diagonal. It's a nice bit of interplay between the two diagonals there. Um, and now two can't be in those cells. That two says it can't be there. So two's in one of these two. Four, seven, two, four, three, nine. 
this cell can see 3, 8, 4, 7, 2 in its row, 9, 6 in its column, so it must be 1 or 5. And that's very interesting because that pairs up with this cell on the same diagonal that also must be 1 or 5. So they must form a 1, 5 pair and they're both looking at the central cell in the grid, which now cannot be 1 because 1 and 5 must be on the diagonal in those two cells. This can't be a 1. That becomes a 6. Central cell of the diagonal is always pretty key and kind of nice to get a handle on. We can fill 1, 4 in there. Let's... Um, quickly look at the rest of that diagonal. Yes, the remaining two cells on it must be 9 and 8. In fact, since we got that 9, that should have determined where 9 goes on this diagonal. It goes there. This last one on the diagonal is 8. We still have this 1, 5 to resolve. And that's quite an interesting pair as well, because once you get a pair on the diagonal, they are both looking at a couple of other cells in the grid. They have to be different, so that's 1 and 5 in some combination on those two. They're both looking there, now that must be 9 or 6, but they're also both looking here, and that makes this effectively a naked single, because it can see 1 and 5, definitely, we don't know which order, but it can see them both on the diagonal, and it can also see 9, 6, 2, 8, 7, 3. The only number left that that can be is 4. So that's there, we said this was 6 or 9 based on that same sort of principle. Now, 4 is there, not on the diagonal. 4 is there, not on the diagonal. 4 can't be here because of that 4. So on this diagonal, 4 must be here. And the puzzle's working very nicely now. On this diagonal now, we've got 2, 4, 6, 9, 7, 3. So we've still got 1, 8, and 5 to place. That must be 1 or 5 because of that 8. In fact, that 8 has ruled out 8 from here in this box. So 8 goes there. 8 on the diagonal must now be here. This is another 1 or 5, and we can see from that 1 which it is. And now we can finish off that box, this row, the row at the bottom. That deals with this number on the diagonal. And we really are probably cruising home at this point. 5, 4, 6 just by elimination. 6 and 1 up here. That becomes a 9 and a 5. Um, what have we got down here? 1 and 2. Actually, we can't resolve those yet. But everything else is coming out. Now we can, because that 1 has sorted out the 1, 4 pair. And that 1 that, that gives us re resolves the 2, 1 pair. So now 9 here and really not too difficult from this point. So I don't know if this is gonna help with the uh, academic junior high decathlon, but I do help hope that it's given the students at Paramount some chance to understand what techniques are useful in looking at diagonal Sudoku. And there we are, uh, quick check, looks okay. And there we go. So just a fairly straightforward tutorial today. That puzzle won't take many people very long, but um, I hope that was of some use to you if you're learning the techniques for Sudoku and especially for diagonal Sudoku. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye for now.